um, class and interface initialization. Right. Um, this is the process of setting static fields in classes and interfaces. And what we've discussed so far is the setting of instance fields. Uh, static fields, by the way, are also known as class variables. Um, and now, initialization is done using static initialization blocks, which we've seen already. And um, uh, just like with instance initialization blocks, you can have more than one. And uh, also, um, static field initializers are also used. Um, um, you know, it's just a field equals it's some expression. That's a static field initializer. Now, um, the same rules on forward references um, apply just like they did for instance initializers. Um, now, the initialization um, takes place at various times and um, uh, there's no, usually no clearly related thread of execution. Um, uh, therefore, if you get um, a checked exception being thrown, you have to catch it because there's nowhere for it to propagate to. So if you throw an exception, it has to be caught um, within that um, static initialization block um, because it can't be propagated, basically. So if you throw an exception, make sure it's not checked or it's caught. Um, execution of um, um, any static initializers and um, static field initializers occurs in the order they are declared. Now, except, except in the case of um, static final fields which are initialized with compile time constants. So if they're static final fields and they're initialized with compile time constants, then they are set first before anything else. Now, even so, even though they're set first, that does not affect the rules about forward references. They remain the same. And it simply ignores the fact that they might be final and already set. It doesn't matter. They're ignored. So the same rules apply. It doesn't affect the rules. Now, um, initializing a class causes its direct superclass to be initialized first, in the same sort of way as um, constructors. You know, um, unless of course that superclass happens to be initialized already. You see, because you only initialize it once; you don't do it repeatedly. Now, um, it um, does not cause um, any if you've got a class and you initialize it, it doesn't cause any implemented interfaces to be initialized, just the direct superclass. And if you initialize any interface, uh, that doesn't cause its super interfaces to be initialized either. So this, this um, chaining only applies as it were to classes, not to interfaces. Um, I think we'd better see an example. Here's an example to uh, illustrate uh, what what's going on here. Um, this class Z here has got um, two static uh, uh, methods in it. Uh, one returns uh, the value of J and the other returns the value of K. And uh, J and K are down here. And uh, we set I to be whatever the value of J is at that point and H to be whatever the value of K is at that point. And uh, and this is all the static initialization going on. And um, the reason we have to use these uh, methods and we can't just set J directly is because that would be a forward reference. And uh, that uh, would generate a compiler error. So we've had to uh, put it into these uh, methods here instead. Right, and if we look at this um, class test here, um, uh, this uh, z.i is enough to trigger initialization of this and it gets initialized and the question is what is the output here z.i well i says um, peak j and j is um, a final um, a final int and uh, being final means um, 
In effect, it go operates first, it runs first before any other things take place. So we get one. That's so why we get one there. And if we look at this, z.h, um, z.h takes a look at value of k. And at this point here, it has not been set at all. So it's still at the default value of 0. So h gets set to 0, and that's why that output's 0. Right, now having said that um, static final um, uh, static final fields with uh, set with compile time constants like this get done first, if you actually look at the code, you find that what happens most of the time is the compiler simply replaces this return j with a return of 1, and uh, effectively gets rid of this altogether. And any reference to j is simply replaced with 1 which it can do, and it actually does that, which has the same effect, of course, as, as if that had run first. Now, that's what the compiler, in effect, seems to be doing, but uh, um, the same effect occurs, of course. It doesn't make any difference. Right, so the question is, um, what uh, what will trigger initialization? And um, these are the various cases under which you will get initialization. For a class. Now, um, what happens is it's triggered immediately before the first occurrence of any of the following. Okay, so it comes before the first occurrence. So if you create an instance of, the, of a class, then it will trigger an initialization before, immediately before that, the first time it occurs. Uh, similarly, if you call a static method in a class, that again will trigger can trigger an initialization. If um, a static field is assigned, that's another example when it will trigger it. And um, if a static field is used and it's not a final primitive or string initialized with a compile time constant expression. Okay, so it's not something like that, because as you can imagine, if it's just going around replacing these things with uh, the actual value everywhere, it's not going to need to trigger initialization. So if it's a static field and it's, it's not one of those sort of things, then that can trigger initialization. There's also a thing with um, assert statements. Um, now, an assert statement... Um, causes the enclosing top-level class to be initialized. Um, yeah, we'll maybe have to discuss more about that when we do nested classes and stuff. That's not really too difficult. Um, and um, there's another possible cause is um, there are um, some methods in this um, package Java language reflect which can also cause initialization. Now this uh, particular um, package here, um, it's used in fact to um, enable you to look inside of classes and, and to look at uh, uh, methods in, in the class itself and uh, variables and stuff. So not surprisingly that can in, in certain circumstances trigger initialization. 